For Tuesday, March 28th, from the lectionary in Ephesians, the second chapter, God, who is rich in mercy out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ and raised us up with him and made us sit with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God. Not because of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. For reflection. There was a sermon I heard some 40 years ago that has stuck with me and that I have several times described in conversation with students or friends who have been anxious about being faithful to the precise plan that God had for their lives. The sermon was preached by Harold Jansen, a wonderful bishop of the old ALC, and in it he described God's response to such an anxious soul. The words from God went something like this. My child, I gave you life and loved you from your birth. When you needed rescue, I sent my son to who lay down his life for you. I redeemed you. I forgave you. I gave you new and eternal life. So now surprise me. Surprise me. Talking about God's plan for your life has its place and can be helpful. But this may be a more needed truth at times, namely that perhaps God doesn't have a plan, but rather wants you to have the freedom of your salvation, freedom to surprise him. I find it gracious to think that God should desire our freedom and would prefer surprise to omniscience. Whenever I come to this passage from Ephesians, I think again about that sermon, and particularly so in connection with this final verse. The New Revised Standard Version translates that last phrase as describing the good works, quote, to be our way of life, unquote. And that's a good translation, but I think it too much suggests that the good works that God has prepared are laid out as on a fixed and narrow path, all in a line to be picked up one after the other. But when I look at the original Greek here, it seems to me that the suggestion is more like an open field that God would see us walking around in That's actually what the verb means, to walk around, even to wander. And so I like to think that these good works are more like Easter eggs that God has put here and there and over there for us to discover as we walk in freedom and in grace and discover them. We will not find them all, perhaps. I'm sure we won't, but we will find them. And with each of them, God will be delighted and exclaim, Oh, you found that one.